Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, my name is John Jensen. I'm 28 years old and I'm a recovering heroin addict. Um, I'm shooting the video in my car because it just seemed like the best place because this is where I spent a lot of my time during my using days. So, uh, you know, I do a lot of reflection when I'm in my front seat or my driver's seat, <clears throat> my passenger seat, and I figured why not go there, do some recollection, do some thought for this video so I could uh, give it back to the public and to better inform them. So basically it all started out when I was a kid, man. I grew up in a city, Gloucester City, New Jersey. Uh, and you know, you were born to play sports and you were raised a tough nosed kid. And you know, you didn't take any crap and you didn't give no crap. And uh, you know, I was, I was raised with morals and values. <clears throat> um, my mother, uh, she was a single mom. Dad lived in town, but he wasn't around a whole lot. And she worked a full-time job to make sure that me and my sister weren't on the streets all the time. And um, you know, she did what she could with what she had, and so did my father, and I realize that now through a long process of recovery, but um, basically, you know, I took my first drink and drug at a very young age. Uh, I was 9, 10 years old when I had my first hit of a joint and my first sip of alcohol. And from there, you know, they talk about this disease being progressive. Uh, it basically spiraled out of control, and uh, I found myself, you know, at a very young age in, in middle school, wanting to drink every weekend, wanting to smoke pot every weekend, and that's the way my, my story goes. I did that for a long time. I would go wherever I could. Um, if I couldn't do it at home, I would go to a friend's house that would participate with me, that we'd be able to kind of maneuver around their, their home like we could mine and not really have any rules or regulations, and um, we got away with a lot. <clears throat> so I did that for a long time. Um, up until high school where we would just drink on the weekends and smoke pot and it was basically harmless um, But I didn't realize at the time how much of a hindrance it was putting on my growth um, as a young man uh, you know uh, not only Physically, but <clears throat> mentally, you know my uh, my my ability my smarts, you know my capability to maintain information things like that so um, <clears throat> I wasn't educated on all this stuff until you know, further down the road when I decide to go through this recovery process. And uh, it, it spiraled out of control once I hit high school. It even got worse. You know, the hard drugs came into play like cocaine uh, and the prescription pills. And, you know, my story is not really different than anybody else's. It just goes down that line where it went from one thing to the next to the next to the next. And I never really questioned um, what I was doing, you know, who I was hurting, you know, I, it basically was like, as long as I felt good and as long as I was having fun, that's all that really mattered. So, um, yeah, I did that. I kept on doing that and, uh, I didn't really get in any real trouble. I kept it very, you know, on the down low. Uh, I only used around certain people. Uh, I only, you know, used with certain people. Um, and I tried to keep it a secret because not only, you know, I had played sports as well, football, basketball, and baseball my, my whole life, basically since I was six years old up. And I needed to be able to perform and I needed to be able to go and, and not, you know, have coaches and teachers and all them know what was going on, at, on you know, outside of the school zone um, because I kept it very together there. I kept, I made sure that, you know, anything that I did at school, um, I separated it from my outside life. But and that's why I was very, very careful who I used with because most of the people that I used with had the same type of background as me. They were involved in the school. Uh, they played sports. They didn't want teachers to know. They didn't want families to know. So they had to keep it a secret. So I found myself using with like-minded people. Um, and that's kind of how my, how this story goes. If you really, if when I really look back and I surrounded myself with people who were doing the same things that I was doing the whole time. And, um, you know, it's something I try to do today in my recovery. I, I try to make sure that I surround myself with people that are doing the same things that I'm doing to make sure I stay stay focused on my recovery. So, um, fast forward a little bit. You know, I was uh, I was coming up to my senior year, and I had finally gotten my first serious bit of trouble. Me and my friends, you know, we had we had done some crimes, and we got caught. And um, you know, we fir I fir finally realized like that my life needed to change and a big hindrance on it were like drugs and alcohol you know this was the first time to me that there was proof that I really I really needed help but I didn't know where to turn for help at the time I didn't you know I never went through a dare class growing up I didn't have um I didn't have anybody teach me with what, what, what addiction was you know what recovery was AANA <clears throat> I really had no idea and I really didn't have anybody um that I knew in my immediate family that suffered from the disease really um 
or so I thought, you know, looking back at it now, there's plenty of evidence of other people in my family that probably could have pointed me in the right direction or at least let me know what was going on. But at the time, I really just didn't understand. Uh, so I started to, um, I started to buckle down a little bit and I, and I, and I looked in the mirror and I said, you know, John, you really need to change something about what you're doing because at this rate, you know, you're not going to live past 30 years old. And I said, you know what? I just got to calm down. This will, this will pass. Um, you know, I'm just like every other kid. I just drink a little too much or I just party a little too hard with the drugs. I just got to calm down and everything will be okay. I'll go to college. Uh, I'll get a wife. I'll get a job and, and everything will surpass and, and it'll be fine. Like this will, this, will, this will never happen. It'll be like it never happened. And that's kind of how I thought life was going to go. I said, all right, let's do this. And uh, I buckled down a little bit and I started to get, you know, better grades. And I did well in sports that year and going into my senior year and things started to get a little bit better and better and better. And, uh, you know, I realized like, you know, oh, I could do this on my own or so I thought, you know, I started to think I got this a little bit, you know, um, and I did like control drinking for a while. I made sure I only drank at certain times and I didn't drink on, you know, Sundays and I didn't drink during the week and I only went to the parties with my friends and I made sure I was safe and I didn't do this drug or I didn't do that drug, you know, and it was controlled drinking and using for, for about a year and a half. And, um, I finally hit my senior summer and of course, you know, there's party after party after party after graduation and, you know, uh, as they say, shit hit the fan. And, um, I went out of control my senior summer going into my freshman year of college. Um, drank heavier than I ever did, partied harder than I ever have, and my life started to spiral out of control, except the only problem was I had no consequences because now I really didn't have to do anything. I just had to keep it together for a summer, and during the summer, everybody's expected to party, so I really didn't have anybody down my throat too much about what I was doing because I would just stay out and do it outside of the house, and I'd come home, and it, like nothing ever happened. You know, Nobody knew what was going on on the outside. And, um, I finally, um, <clears throat> you know, I leave for school, uh, September rolls around and like, I got this terrible habit, you know, I'm using Coke all the time and I'm drinking and, uh, it was just like the worst combination of, you know, things that you could possibly have going on. And it was so, I had so much usage. My body was taking such a toll, um, that I didn't realize that I, you know, I had fully progressed past, uh, any coming back point. So now, you know, I'm in full-fledged addiction, alcoholism. Um, but my mind doesn't know this yet, you know. And um, I'm like, thank God I'm leaving for college. Everything will stop. And as soon as I got to college, it just kept on moving. You know, college is a place you go and there's not much supervision. You know, there's no one really there to tell you what to do. They have rules and regulations and and you're an adult. So it's up to you to follow those rules and regulations or you don't stay. And uh, I didn't follow them. And very shortly, you know, I had a very short-lived college career. Um, I ended up dropping out all my classes and leaving because I was doing so bad anyway. So uh, within the first semester, I ended up coming home. You know, I didn't go back to school for a while, and I just hung around home with people that were just hanging out, drinking every day, doing pills, um, you know, and my life, that's what I did for a couple of years. You know, that was at uh, 18 years old. So I did that till about I was 22 years old. And, you know, at 22 years old, I found my disease progressing into heroin. And I'm starting to use heroin now and sniffing it. And then eventually, you know, that would lead to intravenous use. Um, it would also come along with a, a ton of um, legal matters that would seriously impact my life in the near future. Um, you know, I was looking at serious prison time, 10 plus years, and I was 22 years old, and I pretty much figured my life was over. And, uh, you know, at that point, I accepted the fact that I was probably going to go to prison for a long time, and I ran hard. I took the next, you know, two and a half years of my life, and I ran that into the ground as hard as I could. Um, I didn't see a turning back, you know, I didn't see a coming back point. And uh, I started to have my first experience with like rehab. I, I checked myself in my first rehab at 22. Um, I got like 14 days before I ended up having to leave for insurance purposes. Then uh, I go to another rehab very, sh you know, about a month and a half after that one. Um, within the next six months, I was in like six rehabs between detox and rehabs and TC programs. Um, and some were long term, some were short term. And you know, I just never could really understand, like, 
the obsession had never left me. You know, the obsession to use or drink had never left me. And it would leave for brief moments, but it would come back on me so strong and I didn't know what to do with it. And um, somehow, you know, by the grace of God, some of my court stuff started to clear up and it looked like I wasn't going to get in so much trouble. And uh, a friend had offered me the opportunity to go to Florida to go to treatment. And I said, you know what, let me take this chance. Let me take this time that I have. I'll, you know, notify the court to what's going on. Um, and I'll go away for treatment. I'll get some help. So I did. I went down there. And from day one, I was introduced to, you know, the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, 12-step program is 12-step is program to me. Um, I'm not the kind of person that is going to crucify you for whatever program you choose, but for me, it's getting involved in a 12-step program and actually going through the 12 steps, getting a sponsor, getting a home group, getting involved, doing the footwork, and uh, get yourself better. And you know that's where that's where the true recovery lies. You know, I tell a lot of the families I do work in the field of recovery. I work in the in the addictions field, and and I tell all the families I say, listen, you know, what we do is 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 a time for your loved one to just dry out really get education on on the disease of addiction learn about you know the different ways to cope with their stress and their anger and their anxiety and all this stuff that's going to hit them when they leave but the real work in lies in the rooms when they leave here and, and it's getting involved in a 12-step program and getting you know and giving back to the to the community that gave so much to me you know um I was given so much, you know, I was introduced to a man who became my sponsor and that man really helped me out down the road. He taught me how to live life and he taught me how to handle life as it comes, you know, life on life terms as they say. And, uh, you know, each day I I would do some work on myself and I would talk to him and uh, I talked to him every day for a long time. You know, I'd call him no matter what, even if I was having a good day, I'd call him to let him know I was having a good day. Um, and that's how my that's how I learned to recover man you know slowly but surely some of these things start to clear up in my life and um some of the problems that I had financially you know uh spiritually mentally all that stuff started to go away and I started to feel like a human being again and I was no longer controlled by the obsession to use or drink you know and that was the biggest thing you know I could lay my head down I could lay my head on a pillow at night and I didn't have to think about did I want to use or drink because the thought wasn't there. The obsession to use was gone for me. And that had all come through the doing the work through a 12 step process, going through all 12 steps with a sponsor. Um, and then eventually what I did was take someone else through those steps the way my sponsor took me through it. And today I just try to do that stuff on a daily basis. You know, I have a daily reprieve that I go through to remind myself, you know, that I do have a problem and that the only, you know, I have a solution for that problem. Um, and I have to practice that every day of my life. So, you know, I try my best to be a good person on a daily basis and just continue to do the next right thing. And, um, I find myself falling short a lot of the times, but for the most part, you know, I can say that, uh, you know, I have, I have seen change in myself and I'm a change man and, you know, God willingly, September 8th, uh, I'm sorry, February 8th, um, 2017, I'll be celebrating four years of my own sobriety and, um, you know, I never really thought I'd be able to get to that point in my life. I really never thought that I could go through my whole life or my, you know, my 20s, you know, even just my 20s without a drink or a drug. And, uh, you know, it's being proven true to me and uh, so many others around me that I've seen get better through this process. You know, it truly is a miracle to be on this side of the fence today. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to share that story and uh, hopefully going forward my story can help someone else and if they have you know if that's at the, at the very least if one person gets anything out of this that's you know then i've done my job so thank you guys thanks for having me and uh, i appreciate your time bye